Hello and welcome back to CIS 1440 JavaScript programming for the web. This week, uh, week four, we're doing testing and debugging. This will involve Murak chapter four primarily and also uh, take a look at the Ducket book chapter 10. So let's get started. How do we test and debug a JavaScript application? So um, there's a difference between testing and debugging that we have to establish. Um, the goal of testing is to find or confirm lack of, but usually we can't 100% guarantee there are no errors, but we can f certainly find errors by testing. So finding all the errors that are possible uh, to find before the application is put into production. That's testing. Once you've found errors, uh, however, though, you take a, you do a round of debugging. Debugging means to remove bugs, and bugs are problems with the code. So we fix all the errors before the application is put into production. Usually you do a round of testing, and then when, uh, you list what bugs you find, and then you um, do debugging, and then go back again. And it's frequently the case where um, once JavaScript encounters a bug, um, in some cases, um, it will not continue, so you can't find any further bugs until you fix the one. So a lot of times that's the case. There are three common test phases. You check the user interface to make sure it works correctly. Um, that could be uh, phase one. Make sure that all the keys and controls work to uh, correctly, that the text is displayed properly, etc. Then you test the application with valid input data to make sure the results are correct. That's your second phase. Um, before you're done, though, you want to uh, enter valid data, but test all the limits of the application using correct data. Then you want to test it with um, invalid data. So at your point at, at this um, step, you want to try to make the application fail or give it unexpected user actions, like clicking a mouse uh, button at the wrong time or entering a key at the wrong time or entering invalid data. Um, you know, putting a number where a name should be, name should, where a number should be, etc. The three types of errors that you can uh, encounter, this goes for JavaScript in many, in pretty much any language. Um, you're going to have syntax errors, potentially, runtime errors, and logic errors. And often, not always, but often, this is in kind of an order of easier to find and correct uh, out to harder to find and sometimes correct but usually syntax errors are quite easy to um, find. Um, syntax errors are basically just errors that violate the rules uh, of JavaScript or the language you're working in so that means if you're using incorrect um, JavaScript code in general. Uh, Optana um, can and other IDEs that we're a deal with JavaScript, but since we're dealing with Optana, Optana can actually find uh, most uh, syntax errors. Syntax errors are the easiest to fix because both web browsers and the IDEs like Optana provide error messages that help us do that. They might point to a specific area and say you're missing a semicolon, or they might say, um, you know, that function doesn't exist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Runtime error occurs when a uh, after the page has been loaded already, but and you're past syntax problems at this point, it's not syntax related usually, um, you have a statement that can't be executed. The JavaScript engine will throw an exception that stops the execution of the application. So that's a runtime error. That's a, sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to track down than syntax errors, but sometimes they're um, not that difficult either. Logic errors are errors in coding. So for example, um, getting the wrong result. You might um, have, for example, a, an online calculator you're building and if you accidentally behind the scenes um, you know, make something multiply when it should be adding, then that would be a logic error because it does return a value, it's just the invalid value. Um, other examples, um, like in the Calculate MPG um, that they've been working with throughout, um, throughout the book so far, if you have uh, chapter 3 code, which I've uploaded, you I believe it's in there. Um, if not, and you want it, I can definitely upload it. But basically the uh, problem with this one is, you'll see that it says NAN right there, not a number. 
um, to illustrate logic errors, the Calculate MPG application in this figure has a logic error. Here you can see that the second entry is empty and the result of the calculation is not a number, but the calculation shouldn't be done at all if the entries are empty. So that could be a problem somewhere in the statement that's taking in uh, the values. It should, you know, check this right here and say, oh, well, you know, that's empty, you can't uh, even perform the calculation, please enter a value, and it should never even get to the point where it tries to do a calculation. So even though this didn't crash, this is still a logic error. The uh, common JavaScript errors are, um, and pretty much any programming language you're going to deal with, a lot of times these are, this is the case, you can have misspelling of keywords, um, not just keywords, but also of identifiers of methods and, and such. So for example, you have a get element by ID. The actual methods or the actual function's name is get element by ID with a lowercase d at the end. But since JavaScript is case sensitive, if you put an uppercase d, um, this symbol right here is not defined. To our human eyes, this looks just like this. Um, but you know that um, if we read it, we would say get element by ID and get element by ID. That sounds the same to us, but JavaScript sees a big difference between this and that. This one little letter here makes the uh, complete uh, makes a complete difference between these two. These are not the same thing. They're not related even. Um, just to us, they look related. So this is the actual function name that's available, and this one is not. This is nothing, unless we've defined it elsewhere. Omitting required parentheses, quotation marks, or braces is also a syntax error. Not using the same opening and closing quotation marks. So if you open with a double quote and you close with a single quote, that's an error. Omitting the semicolon at the end of a statement. Misspelling or incorrectly capitalizing an identifier. For example, if you have a variable named sales tax and then you accidentally refer to it as sales tax with a lowercase t instead of a capital T. Another example is uh, maybe in a HTML reference, you might refer to an attribute value or other HTML component incorrectly. For example, you might refer to an ID, um, in camel case, sales tax, when the ID in HTML is actually sales underscore tax. So a lot of times that's the case. In JavaScript, um, camel case might be more um, common. And then in the HTML, the underscore technique or the underscore style is more common. What about problems with data and comparisons? Not testing to make sure that a user entry is the uh, right data type before processing is one example of this. Not using parse int and parse float to convert a user entry into a numeric value before processing it. And using one equal sign instead of two when testing for equality. So that actually performs an assignment rather than a comparison. So that could be a, a problem. Um, another thing you need to be aware of is problems with floating point arithmetic. Um, floating point numbers, these are numbers that have decimal points in them, can lead to arithmetic results that are uh, imprecise, they're not expected. So you have 74.95 and in actual math we know if we uh, multiply that by 0.1 it just shifts everything over to the uh, right or rather shifts the um, decimal place to the left one. However, JavaScript is a little bit fickle um, and the way computers process, or process floating point numbers, so it may be actually off by just even a teeny amount. So using equality with them would be a problem. One way to fix this problem is to round the result and then convert it back to a floating number. So we use the rounding to fixed, remember that converts it to a string though, um, then you have to call it again and uh, call a parse float. Um, so you could do it all in one uh, using chained function calls, like we learned about last week. That's uh, another alternative to doing it on two different lines. There could also be a problem with an undeclared variable. If you assign a value to a variable that hasn't been declared, remember that JavaScript engine treats it as a global variable. This can happen when you misspell a variable name. For example, I might have sales tax with a capital T, and I calculate it, and then uh, I try to reuse it here by getting the uh, parse float. Um, notice that sales tax here is what I did declare here, and they were intending on you reusing the variable apparently, but look at what happened. It's a lowercase t. So what happens? Even though they think they're reusing this variable, if they had a capital T here, everything would work fine. Um, but what is this? It will not cause 
um, a, compi uh, a um, syntax error to be flagged because what happens in Java if you have a variable that hasn't been declared yet with the var keyword um, but you just use it as if it had been declared it's global okay so it automatically becomes global remember if you do not put the var keyword and it's uh, inside of a function it automatically becomes global so it's accessible to everything and also you also note that this hasn't been rounded because we wanted to round it and then parse it back to a float but that hasn't happened we just get whatever was calculated here with the imprecision or any kind of you know trailing decimal places and then we return it this is a completely different variable which we never use um, top-down coding and testing um, is a technique that they describe in the book um, you want to test the most important operations first and then work your way down to uh, less important operations and do the finishing touches on it. So, um, for example, you might look at it and say, okay, well, I look at this whole thing and I realize, oh my gosh, this doesn't have any data validation. So that's a major problem. So then you add data validation for the first entry, then you add data validation for the additional entries, and then add the finishing touches. For example, move the focus to the first text box, make sure it works. So you want to get the major functionality done first and tested and working properly before you move on to little minor user interface glitches. Um, you might have a really, really nice text box that everything focuses in on, but if you don't have the uh, code actually working and doing validation, then it's not going to be of much use. So it's better to focus on the things that are more important first. Um, something I want you to be aware of and I want you to actually install, if you haven't installed Firefox already, you as a web developer really need to have um, Firefox and Chrome at least. Um, if you're on a Mac, you'll probably have Safari as well, and if you're on Windows, you probably have Internet Explorer. So, but Firefox and Chrome are very, very important to have. Firefox, um, also, I want you to go and install a little program called Firebug. Okay, it's very easy to find. You can go to Google and just type Firebug, and then you'll notice there's an add-on for Firefox, Mozilla add-ons. You click on it, and you can uh, follow the instructions very um, quickly. Okay, it's very easy to install. You click Add to Firefox, it'll integrate it with Firefox, and then you'll have a bunch of stuff available for you to do debugging. So we'll talk about that in uh, just a second, but it, it comes as a little tiny icon near the top. In Optana, I have uh, copied the code that we had from last week in Chapter 3 into Chapter 4 in the email join. Um, they give slightly different examples in the book, but what I'm going to do inside of join list functions, I'm going to uh, call another function, but you'll notice the problem here is that this function is not declared. Um, it has no idea what's going on. This function is not declared. So I'm going to run this. It'll run it in Firefox. And you will notice if I click on Firebug to activate it, you can. it's a toggle, so I can activate and deactivate and uh, choose some things too from there. Um, down here you'll notice that I have the um, script right here. And if I click join our list, it will say the join list functions being run right here with the alert but then when I hit OK you'll notice it'll say reference error do something's not defined and it'll point to this thing that it doesn't recognize so you might think that you're calling a function that is defined but it's not so um, fire uh, firebug does help a lot with that so firebugs probably one of the best um, built-in browser plugins that you can use for debugging. It also helps you debug and work with HTML. So you can uh, point to different items on here and it will um, let you, you know, focus on each of them depending on what you're hovering over. The console prints out stuff like errors and warnings. You can uh, navigate the DOM, um, look at the uh, net for analyzing network traffic and cookies and information like that. So script is where we'll spend a lot of our time though. So we could look at that and say, oh, well, now I see that's not defined, so I can go back and fix it. So Firebug's very, very useful. Um, they're showing just examples like this um, script panel after the link in the console's been clicked, etc. They tell you how to open Firebug and how to um, find a statement that caused an error. Console often gives you uh, information, and also the script does as well. Um, you can also use breakpoints. Breakpoints are pretty easy uh, to use. If I run this again, we've got Firefox open again, 
and I will open up Firebug. Um, you will note that I can cause it right here uh, to stop at a specific location. For example, if I want it to stop there where it sets to the uh, join list, I can uh, do that, but then I think I have to refresh it. Yeah, so before it actually, uh, you'll notice that since that's happening on the onload, as soon as this um, loads, you'll notice that it's it's actually pausing here. So I can look over here in the watch list and the stack and look at all kinds of information here. It'll actually give me a list of the breakpoints. Breakpoints are basically just a mechanism for you to freeze in time what's going on. Um, so all it's doing here is that. Um, I can tell it to uh, step into if it's a function, step over. So I'm stepping over, step over, and then it's just waiting. So when I click uh, join our list, let's say we want that to happen. I click join list, and it follows this breakpoint, goes to the alert. Now you'll notice the alert has not popped up yet. So if I do uh, step over, the alert pops up, then it goes to the next line. And if I say uh, step into, that's when I discover, oh, this is an error. I can't get past this, so i got to actually go fix it. Okay, so you either provide the body for the uh, function, or you get rid of this, or comment it out, or what have you. All right, so you set and remove a breakpoint just basically by clicking uh, to the bar of the left of a statement inside the script editor in Firebug. Remove it, you just click it again. So it's uh, pretty simple. Um, oh, you can also hover over different variables and it will give you information about the contents of the variable or look in the watch pane. You can add uh, new uh, expressions, variable names or expressions that you want to watch inside of the um, watch pane. So as you're going along you can step step over and it will show you the values of the different variables changing as you um, move along. Okay, um, IE often has a lot of uh, errors so they talk about how to um, uh, work in that, different debug modes. So to display the developer tools on the current version of IE you use tools and developer tools um, and then it, you'll get something very similar uh, to what you have as in Firebug. It'll at least give you um, an example or tell you, hey something's not defined. It'll tell you the line and everything in the HTML. So for example here it looks like they were trying to use is not a number but they forgot to capitalize the last in, for example. Um, Another way that's actually used by a lot of people, even people who are uncomfortable using debugging uh, software, are aware of um, doing uh, code traces uh, by putting alerts or other types of debugging or print statements. So these alerts are not intended to be shipped with the product, but sometimes if you notice like, hey, I can't tell if that function is being called or, you know, I don't know where the error happens, because sometimes when an error happens it just stops and doesn't call the rest of the code. Um, so it's kind of hard to track down sometimes, and sometimes the debuggers aren't as helpful as they should be. So you can put a bunch of alerts here. So I put alert an alert here to indicate that this uh, you know function dollar sign function has started, and then maybe in function here, I put one function has started, and then at the end to make sure that I'm getting the values of the miles and gallons, and then later on in else to make sure that the data is valid. Um, so obviously you have an alert that you do plan on putting in production right here which would be an example of an alert that's supposed to warn the user give the user an error say hey both of those have to be numeric you can't do this but this alert down here is just for debugging purposes okay it's for testing and debugging purposes so these are alert statements that helps you trace the code so in other words look through the code as it's running and see how it's uh, how it's working so you might want to make sure that they're um, these uh, two are actually getting uh, set or wired in. So you put an alert in the onload function to make sure that's being called. It should, otherwise your um, program wouldn't load. Um, but this is just uh, images of the trace button. So um, HTML uh, source code for browser display. Uh, to look at the HTML code, you want to right click uh, most of the time in Chrome and other uh, things, if I had a website I was going to, I could right click and then just go to view uh, page source and it'll give the information on the page source. So that usually tells you a little bit about the page. 
Um, notice that the HTML source code doesn't reflect any changes uh, made to the DOM by DOM scripting. So JavaScript does change these, so just be aware of that though. So you typically uh, view the source code for a web page by going to a menu command such as view source, or it might say view page source. This is pretty standard <clears throat> even uh, on across the different browsers. So Firefox, Chrome, uh, IE, Safari, Opera, they all have something where you typically right click and then you say something like um, source, view source, or view page source. And also there may be an actual um, menu called view that you can go there and do that as well. Um, one thing you want to do, you should have learned something about this in your 1400 and or 1420 course when you learned about HTML and CSS, but um, when you test a JavaScript application, notice that you're not just testing the JavaScript code. You have to make sure the HTML is good too, either um, or, or you will um, have problems with the overall application. So it's good to verify, um, validate the um, HTML code as well. So validator w3.org um, is the URL, validator.w3.org. You can ignore the validate by upload um, uh, inner hyperlink here or inner reference. Just go to validator.w3.org and then you can validate by the URL, um, URI, URL or URI, uh, validate by file upload or vi validate by direct input where you can basically paste or type in specific code and it will validate it. File input upload if you don't have it on a particular site uh, being served by a web server, then you might want to just uh, upload it by file. If you click check and you have the correct doc type at the top, it should give you an idea as to whether the HTML is valid or not. So that's very important to make sure the HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript are all valid in order for the application to move uh, seamlessly. So they give you the link here. All right, so um, with Optana, you can go to Commands, HTML, Validate Syntax. So let's see your commands. I probably want to go over here, don't I? Commands, HTML, and then you might want to do a Validate Syntax, and it should um, yeah, automatically opens an uh, inner web browser here, and if it works properly, it says it's not responding, but that may just be because it's taking a long time. <clears throat> Personally, I just go to the site directly and upload files, but that's just my uh, preference. It's probably because this is extremely slow. Uh, okay, yeah, this is really crappy. Okay, yeah, this isn't even reading the site correctly, so that's probably a bug. Um, this will tell you, hey, there's errors, no character encoding, so things like that. So you would want to put the UTF-8 encoding and all the other fun stuff So in the the header and such. So it will tell you if it's valid, if it's uh, some of it's warnings and some of it are actual full-fledged errors that could cause serious problems or may cause the page not to display right. Some browsers are very forgiving, but that doesn't mean your code's right. Um, some browsers might be able to survive if you miss an HTML closing tag or body closing tag, but it's still not valid HTML. So you do want to go through and make it as valid as possible make it as good as possible with as few warnings as possible and definitely don't want really any errors. So, um, so that's pretty much it. This is a pretty sh relatively short chapter. Um, I hadn't anticipated on being that short, but um, that'll give you some time to uh, work on the examples at the end. I have uploaded the files for the uh, particular chapter and um, I would highly recommend going through the examples. So if you have any question, please uh, post to the forums or post, uh, send me an email. Um, and hopefully, uh, if any of you want specific examples or you're having um, specific problems or you think, well, hey, I don't really understand this aspect or that aspect, um, just please uh, feel free to email me. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.